What a treat. What a special treat for our final show of the week. It's Pierre Lebrun, our hockey insider here at TSN. We're going to talk about a bunch of stuff, and we're going to start with the Leafs search for a new general manager, Pierre. That continues. You reported earlier this week that Brendan Shanahan has already talked to Brad Tree Living about the vacancy. Still early in the process, obviously, but where do things stand one week into the search, Pierre? Well, first of all, Jay, flattery will get you everywhere. So thank you for that <laughs> welcome. Um, yeah, listen, it, it's interesting. The Leafs are obviously being pretty tight-lipped about it. We know that Brendan Shanahan met physically with Brad Tree Living in Toronto for a couple of days. Um, and, and, and that's over now. Where it goes from here is interesting to me. I mean, even if Brendan Shanahan felt deep down that Tree Living is his guy or his next GM, you have to feel that it's reasonable that since we believe the Lisa put together a list of candidates, that he will speak to some of these other candidates. That, that's certainly my sense of it. So I think that's the next step. Um, you know, so who is next? Now, for example, I'll just throw a name at you, Jay. I mean, my sense is that there would be a name like Mark Bergman on this list. Now, does Brendan Shanahan reach out to Mark Bergman to physically talk with him, or is it just a name on the list? That's what I think Brendan Shannon has to work his way through next year after meeting with Brad Tree Living. He doesn't want to rush through this, but there's a lot to do with this Leafs roster between now and July 1st. So there is a bit of urgency. And, and, and that's why I guess, you know, just to touch on that a little bit more, you hear names like the Doug Armstrongs and the George McPhees of the world thrown out there and the complicated process that would actually involve them getting out of their current jobs and taking over the Leaf job, right. do you think that might just rule them out just because of the sense of urgency? There's so much for the Leafs to do before July 1. Certainly, I mean, listen, we talked about Doug Armstrong earlier this week on Insider Trading. I mean, he's got three more years on his deal. Yeah. You know, um, you would have to go to the Blues and owner Tom Stillman and say, is there any way you'd let us talk to your guy? And why would Tom Stillman be interested in that? The only way that works is if Doug Armstrong goes to his owner, and those two guys, by all accounts, Tom Stillman and Doug Armstrong, have a really close relationship, and Doug Armstrong says, listen, this is, this is a pretty special opportunity. Do you think I could chat with the Leafs? I don't know that we're going to see that happen, Jay. I just feel like with three more years on a deal, it's, it's so sort of, you know, I don't know that we've seen that before in the league where a guy with that much term is, is allowed to leave. So... Again, it's, he's a person that certainly checks all the boxes in terms of his experience, won a cup, et cetera, uh, his confidence, uh, all his Team Canada history. But to me, I think for Brendan Shanahan, probably focus on guys who are available, guys who are free agents, as, as you say, um, people who, whose contracts are expiring or are looking for, for promotions. That, to me, is what makes more sense, more realistic for Brendan Shanahan. Let's talk about Kyle Dubas. He is believed to be meeting with the Penguins, and they are believed to be very serious in their interest for him as their potential next GM. But after the comments he made last week uh, mm -hmm. about working in Toronto or nowhere else, um, listen, they still have Sid, they still have Gino, they still have Latang. This is still a, you know, potentially a contender, even though they did make the postseason. But do you believe that this is a job that Dubas would truly want at this point in time, Pierre? So, so Jay, that is the great question right now. I, and listen, I'll be honest with you. I have tried several times this week in texting Kyle Dubas and asking him that very question. <laughs> and, and I'll give him credit very politely. He finally said, I'm not answering that. I'm not commenting on this right now. So, so I get it. We'll have to see after he this process plays its self out what Kyle Dubas ultimately decides because you've just asked the important question. We know the Penguins, you know, want to make him an offer if they haven't done so already. They've, they've gotten permission from the Leafs to meet with him. But it is a question based on the very emotional nature of, of some of his responses at his last public news conference, Kyle Dubas, that you have to ask the question. If he wasn't 100% sure that he could continue on as Leafs GM, that he needed some time to think about things, you know, what would make him so ready to suddenly jump in another job? It may be that the way the leaf separation worked out, that it, it has fueled, fueled something in him where he's hungry again to work elsewhere. That may end up being where this works out. But I will say one thing for you, Jay, uh, 
you mentioned about the Pittsburgh job. Yeah, Sidney Crosby is still one of the great players in the world. I don't think that job in Pittsburgh, to me, is that appealing. I think that's a team that's two years away from running off a cliff. Right. Uh, it's an aging roster, still with some great players. I mean, I mean the, 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 the way that Sidney Crosby and Malkin played this year is unbelievable. They each played 82 games. But there's a real lack of depth on that roster. They've traded away a lot of assets over the years to stay in the fight. I've actually talked to a couple of other uh, people that actually interviewed in Pittsburgh and, and are no longer in the mix, Jay, who have similar concerns and actually shared them with, <laughs> with the Penguins about the work ahead. I, I think there's a sense they could compete for another year or two, but after that, it gets pretty ugly. So why exactly is that the most appealing job? For Kyle Dubas, other than the fact that you get to work with an amazing athlete and, and person in Sidney Crosby. On Thursday, you spoke to new GM of the Calgary Flames, Craig Conroy, who was on the latest episode of the Got Your Back podcast with Ryan Rashad. And um, since Craig Conroy was an internal candidate, Pierre, um, what was his interview process like? What was the hiring process like <laughs> for Craig Conroy? Tell me about that. Well, I didn't see this coming, uh, Jay. And by the way, Ryan and I would love to have you on our Got, Got Your Back podcast. So I'm let's, in. Uh, let's make a date. I would love that. All right. Um, yeah, we asked Craig about it because, you know, my experience over the years, Jay, is that sometimes when you're an internal candidate, it can, it can either be beneficial, which I think it was at the end of the day for Craig Conroy and the plays. It can also work against you because you get someone who's deciding the process saying, yeah, but... You know, the grass could be greener with these other external candidates. So it, it's not always in your favor. But, you know, we asked Craig about what it's like. Oh, my gosh. Hilarious. He talks about there are a couple of times during the process where he's sitting in his office in Calgary and can have to go close his door because he can hear Don Maloney on a Zoom call with other GM candidates in the middle <laughs> of an interview. <laughs> and he says, I don't want to hear that. And I, I give Craig Connor credit. He goes, I closed the door. I, I didn't need to hear that. But what he said in the end, in all seriousness, though, is that he welcomed the competition because he didn't want to be handed that job. He wanted Don Maloney to get there after a real thorough effort to talk to other candidates, which Don Maloney did. And honestly, Craig Conroy, nine years as an AGM, certainly has bided his time and has waited for this opportunity. And one of the guys he was competing with, Pierre, Dave Nonis ends up being his assistant GM right. in the end and brought in sort of as almost like a bit of security, a little experience for him. Uh, do, do you feel like in talking to Craig that this is going to be a nice fit in Calgary? Because it doesn't seem like there's anyone who doesn't like Dave Nonis. So people seem to think this is a good fit. Yeah, I really liked everywhere he's been. And I think that experience would be valuable for a young GM. You know, one of the harder things that I've seen over the years with first-year GMs, Jay, is that they're, they're a little... You know, they're a little trigger shy with making their first big or two moves, you know, like they, yeah. they, they want to sort of get comfortable in the chair. For sure. You know, as, as Craig and I talked during that podcast, he doesn't have time to get comfortable in the chair. He's got some big decisions coming with this roster. He's got seven players heading into the exp uh, last year of their expiring deal, some big players like Elias Lindholm. He's not going to have time to say, give me six months. He's going to have to figure this out in six weeks. And so I think having Dave Nonis there will be huge. And it shouldn't be, it shouldn't go unnoticed that Brad Pascal, also an AGM, he went to the wire in that process too for the GM interview, by the way, another internal candidate. Um, and they ended up elevating him as well with the new uh, uh, VP title. So that front office has had a bit of a facelift, even if some of the names are familiar. Now, speaking of familiar names, Patrick Waugh and the Quebec Ramparts uh, heading to the Memorial Cup in Kamloops. They are the champions of the queue. Patrick Waugh said, Pierre, that this is his final season as Rempart's head coach. So, of course, you know, my next question, is it time? Could we see the legendary Hall of Famer back behind an NHL bench in the near future? If the fit is right, the answer is yes. Jay, we could see Patrick Waugh behind an NHL bench. Now, again, he's not going to jump at any opportunity. But uh, to show that he's serious about his interests and his intentions, he uh, recently uh, hired a new agent, Gil Scott, who's been around a long time, represents a lot of coaches. Uh, and Gil Scott's working the phones. Uh, I'm told that a couple of NHL teams have already reached out and just sort of wanted to feel out the situation with Patrick Waugh to see how serious he was. So we'll see where it goes. Obviously, he's busy right now with the Memorial Cup starting up uh, Friday. But um, I do think it's genuine that he would like to come back and coach. And, and I'm all for it because... <laughs> 
The NHL's a better place with Patrick Waugh behind the bench. Do you remember his first game in Colorado when he coached? He nearly, he nearly took the glass down, the, the dividing glass between benches. He was yelling at Bruce Boudreaux right. at the time of the Anaheim Ducks, <laughs> if memory recalls. Yep. I mean, who doesn't want that back in the NHL? Come on. And so, listen, there, there are a number of openings in the league. Uh, the New York Rangers still have an opening. Uh, you know, Chris Drury, the GM, by the way, former teammate in Colorado with Patrick yeah. Waugh. Uh, the Washington Capitals still have an opening, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll, let's see where that goes. But uh, it would be fun to have him back. Couldn't agree more. We need Patty back in the league. Uh, Pierre, this is a blast. Thanks for doing this for us. And uh, we will hope to talk to you again uh, real soon. Have a great weekend. All right. I'm off to the Stanley Cup final next week. Maybe we'll chat then. Sounds good.